Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy, and today we're going to fill a viewer request from Christopher Schmidt on Carvana, ticker symbol CVNA. But first, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. I also do not have any personal ties to this company. I'm not short. I'm not long. I have, I, I do. I have nothing involved with this company. So that being said, going into the analysis for this company, uh, first I can see that they're unprofitable. Net income negative 359 million. Uh, so I would have preferred a profitable company, but for the sake of the video, I will try and do my analysis on this company. So profit margins of negative 2.6%. Now their five-year average 2.5%. Okay, so they're potentially on the verge of becoming a profitable company. We'll make sure we go look at the income statement and see if we have any correlating evidence that might lead to that. Now with an unprofitable company, one thing that is going to attract me is very high gross margins because that is going to help them become a profitable company at a faster rate. So 13.4% profit, gross profit margins, not what I'm looking for. I want to see this number, you know, if I'm being greedy, I want to see this number over 40%. So with these low gross profit margins, I'm not surprised that they have a low price of sales. Now, this could be taken as a positive. This is saying that for the investor, the investor for every 30 cents that he invests, the company is going to generate $1 in revenue. But then that also leads back to the high, the gross margins. With these gross margins at 13%, I understand why it has low price of sales. Um I won't go too much into that, but next on the list we have our free cash flow. Now I can see their free their free their negative free cash flow is growing. Their five-year average free cash flow is negative 1.34 billion. Year-to-date free cash flow negative 3.35 billion. Not what I want to see. Now they're not paying a dividend. They're not profitable. I I understand. Return on assets, negative 21%. Return on equity, negative 122%. Return on invested capital, year to date, negative 92.8%. Whew, man, not what, I, they do not do a very good job of investing capital. And you can see the five year average, negative 37%. So not very good, but potentially there's something in the earnings. Maybe they posted earnings. Uh, they were up 40% on Friday, so there there could be a potential change in the company. I don't know, but right now we're going through the financial statements that we that we have. These are not up to date. This this does not have their most recent earnings report, but going off of these, not a very good first look. So we're going to click on the eight pillars. Now, first thing that screams out to me, shares outstanding. Over the last five years, they've diluted 500% of their shares outstanding. So. If you own one share of this company and there's 10 total shares, you own 10% of the business. Now you've held this for five years and they've diluted you 500%. There's now 50 total shares of this company. You still own one share. You go from owning 10% of the business to owning only 2% of the business. This is why for any investment it is important to understand these shares outstanding in the company. Now, they do have revenue growth. There's a couple things in the income statement that we need to look at. But everything else, I mean, I pretty much already stated everything else involved with this eight pillar system. So we're not, we're going to skip over the stock analyzer tool. I, I just don't feel like there's enough uh, correlation with the financial where I would be able to plug in reasonable numbers for this company. So going to the income statement. We're going to go over that one green check mark, and that's revenue. Here's our operating revenue. Now, you can see huge revenue growth. So I could see why there's maybe some interest in this company because of how fast our revenue is growing. But the next thing I look at is the cost of goods sold. Their cost of goods that they're, that they're selling is increasing right in line with that revenue. So is it good revenue growth? I'll leave that up to you to decide. But... Not something that's going to attract me. Next, net income. So we mentioned that they could potentially become a profitable company. Now I can see uh, 2016, negative 17 million. 
Now they do have a profitable year in 2018. You could have thought, okay, now they're, now we're getting onto this consistent profitability. But since then, negative 71 million, negative 150 million, negative 147 million, negative 360 million. Not what I'm looking for in a company that's getting closer to that profitability. That that net income loss is increasing. So not what I'm looking for. Now next we will go look at the shares outstanding. And I can see not too much share dilution right there, but boom, huge increase in shares, and they haven't stopped since. This this company has been issuing out and diluting their shareholders like crazy. I, I mean, I would have already closed out this this entire tab entirely. But, you know, for the video's sake, we are going to finish out some analysis. Uh, next, we're going to go to the chart. I pulled up this on TradingView, CVNA. Now, first thing that I see... I see a decent trend line right here. Now, when we crack that trend line, here's your COVID drop. Boom. Okay, so we're going to draw that trend line in. Next, I can see a nice little W pattern right here. I see a nice 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 wave structure, or wave 4, pretty much back test wave 1. So a nice 5 wave structure, higher low, and we get our extended right leg. So if I was going to draw this trade out right here, here's my neckline of my double bottom. Now, if I was going to drop a stop loss in right here, boom, right there, I probably would have got stopped out. I would have lost uh, $11 a share on that, got stopped out. But for those who may have stuck in with this and were drawing out this trade, we'll just draw it out like this. Boom. And right there. There's our 3 to 1, roughly. So there's your risk reward, 1 to 1, 2 to 1, 3 to 1. Now, if I look at my 3 to 1 and zoom in on this, Look at that gap down right there. Not only is that 3 to 1 risk reward meeting in pretty much at my all-time high, we have a gap down that's getting filled. And look at this wick. We wick right through that, boom, selling pressure. Now this stock does continue the run, but what year was this? This is when we printed a bunch of money and everyone had money to spend. Obviously, companies are going to benefit from that. But the last thing that I'm going I'm to do, uh, we'll touch base on this. They did report earnings. We'll look at that briefly. But I'm going to take a fib tool, top of the move, bottom move, and see what type of extensions we get. Because this is a large drop right here. I want to see that. Top of the move, bottom move. Now I can see, look at that. Full extension. Almost a full extension. Now, as I mentioned in previous videos, you get these, these types of double tops coming near a full extension. Watch out. And boom. This stock tanked. So if I take that percent drop... Man, 95% drop. That is that is nuts. Yeah, this is why I always like to take a fib tool, top and move, bottom move. If you got in down here and you were expecting a full extension, you got it right here. I mean, there's no need to be greedy anymore. Now, if you're buying up at the top right here, good lord, uh, go buy go buy an ETF because you need to understand valuation a little bit better. Now, I'm not and I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm just I'm just stating my opinion, of course, but they did report earnings. Let's go look at that earnings report real quick. Now, now I see they missed. They missed on earnings and they missed on revenue. So maybe there's something that they in forward looking statements in there. I'm not going to pull up the earnings report for this because personally, I'm just not interested in this stock. But short term, I can see a pretty gap free chart except for right here. So let's just clear out our drawings and let's put a horizontal line on this gap fill. So it it's potential that you're going to have profit takers and let's put in a trend line. Now here's our short term trend line right there. It's potential you get some sell off, revert down to this gap, meet up with this trend line. You get a nice pop off that and then you set this sort of double top. So if we get a nice uh, double top coming right here, it's potential that we get back down to this 20 flat range. I'm sure there's some solid support built up right around here. Yeah, I mean, you got, you got some support. This is pretty much where we dropped to on that COVID drop as well. So, yeah, this is, if I was looking for maybe a swing trade or a day trade, uh, I'd be more interested in it down here at this support. Now, lastly, before we finish off this video, um, now, let's say I'm completely wrong with my analysis here. Um, is there any way that I can benefit from this company without even holding it? So I'm going to go to these holders right here. We're going to look at the funds. And um, yeah, I can see right here. I'm actually a holder. 
in this company. Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, VT. Now if you want and now if you really love this company and you hate everything that I say, my recommendation to you is you know you can buy VT and you are actually getting a position into Carvana. I'm a holder of Carvana with everything that I just said in that because I hold VT. I own the entire world's economy in VT and VXUS. That would be my recommendation if you wanted to play this stock. You know, just buy VT. But that is going to complete the video. I hope you guys enjoy the content, and we will see you on the next one.